I'm Econo Alchemist. I'm going to be talking to you about mining Bitcoin at home. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the false narratives around mining Bitcoin at home. I will also talk about why mining Bitcoin at home makes sense. I'll talk about what an ASIC is and what it does, how to buy an ASIC, the infrastructure requirements like electricity, heat, and noise, and I'll cover how to connect to a pool and the privacy implications of that. Some of the false narratives you may have heard are things like Mining Bitcoin at home is too expensive and you would be better off spending your money at an exchange. Well, the reality of the situation is that mining at home will actually yield more Bitcoin than you could buy at an exchange with the same amount of money that you spent on electricity. So for example, right now at the end of September, 2021, the break even kilowatt hour rate for mining Bitcoin is roughly 31 cents a kilowatt hour. If you're an average US resident, you're paying 13 cents per kilowatt hour. That means you're actually accumulating Bitcoin for roughly 60% below market price. Additionally, you're not exposing yourself to the dangers of KYC risks by working with a trusted third party. Another false narrative you may have heard is that you cannot compete with large mining operations. However, home mining is not about competing with large mining operations. Home mining is about accumulating Bitcoin by dollar cost averaging through your electricity bill. In my opinion, large mining operations actually have a disadvantage when compared to small home miners. The large companies have investors to answer to. They need to allocate capital properly in order to maintain their top and bottom lines and they are more likely to wind up in the regulatory crosshairs. Home miners, on the other hand, can use their money to just pay the electricity bill and accumulate non-KYC Bitcoin in return. They don't have to spend that Bitcoin in order to pay for their operations, typically. By doing so, they're actually accumulating Bitcoin at a discount when compared to purchasing it through other methods. Also, home miners don't have to answer to any investors. They only have themselves to answer to. They're a little more nimble and they can move their operations easily without having to go through a bunch of approvals. And if regulators really started cracking down on Bitcoin mining, those who are mining Bitcoin at home are gonna be able to subvert those tyrannical regulations with more ease. You may have also heard that Bitcoin mining is terrible for the environment. The truth of the matter is that as technology continues to develop, you actually get more hashing power out of each machine while it consumes less energy. So the more these new generation ASICs come online to support the network, you're getting more hash power with less energy consumption. So as the overall network hash rate continues to increase, we may very well see a decrease in the amount of energy required to provide that much hash rate. Additionally, many mining operations will actually work off grid and capture stranded or waste energy sources and use those to convert into power that'll run the ASICs and provide hash rate to the network. One example is the work that Upstream Data is doing. They will take mobile data centers and park them on oil and gas drilling sites where typically any extra methane gas is just getting flared or vented off to atmosphere. This allows them to capture the vented and flared methane gas, use it to power an engine that's connected to a generator, take the electrical output from that generator and plug a bunch of ASICs into it. These ASICs then are being powered from wasted energy sources and reducing the emissions that would have just gone into the atmosphere, thus utilizing stranded energy much more efficiently. Fiat consumes way more electricity than Bitcoin ever will. The United States military industrial complex is there to ensure that the petrodollar maintains its position as number one. The wars are funded by this fiat system and the fiat system exists so that these wars can be perpetuated. Bitcoin is not bad for the environment. Fiat is bad for the environment. Mining Bitcoin at home solves several issues for people. One of them is permission. If you want to use banking services, you're at the mercy of the permission of the bank. If they don't agree with the way you want to spend your money, then you don't get to spend your money. They have the ability to censor you. However, by mining Bitcoin at home, you don't have to ask permission from anyone. You can just plug one of these machines in, connect to a pool, and you start getting a steady stream of Bitcoin, which you can then spend however you want. No one can stop your transaction from going through. Also, by mining Bitcoin at home, you keep your KYC information out of it, then it's much more difficult for anyone to financially surveil your activity because they don't know that it's you. All a Bitcoin miner is, is a very powerful computer that runs the SHA-256 hashing algorithm. These computers typically have three circuit boards in them, 
and a fan on either side to move air so that the circuit boards don't get overheated. This is what the inside of the ASIC looks like. It's just three circuit boards with some large heat sinks on them. And this is what the circuit board looks like with the heat sinks on it. Depending on which model ASIC you get, underneath these heat sinks will be roughly 100 microchips that are all calculating the SHA-256 hashing algorithm. These computers are called Application Specific Integrated Circuits, ASICs, because all they do is run that SHA-256 hashing algorithm. These machines cannot do anything else you try and tell them to do. They won't do 2 plus 2, all they do is run that algorithm. This particular machine will run that algorithm about 80 trillion times per second or 80 terahashes. When you connect one of these computers to a mining pool, the pool will send block headers, which are a template of the work that needs to be done. This computer receives the block header and starts running that hashing algorithm, changing what's called announce each time it runs a new iteration of the algorithm. Like I said, this one will do that process about 80 trillion times every single second. The announce is just a variable that the computer will use in order to generate a new resulting hash solution. If that solution meets certain criteria defined by the difficulty adjustment in the Bitcoin network, namely starting with a certain number of zeros, then that result will be accepted by the network as a valid block. Once that block is accepted by the network, then the hash value of that block will be used in part of the next block to prove that it came from the longest chain. Depending on how much hash power you were providing to the network at the time the block was found, you will be rewarded for the work you provided to the network. An ASIC like this one that's capable of doing 80 terahashes will get awarded roughly 55,000 sats per day. Right now at the end of September 2021, 55,000 sats per day is the equivalent of roughly $26 US. However, if you're a average US resident, you're only paying 13 cents per kilowatt hour. So this machine only costs you around $10 a day to operate. So not only are you making your $10 back, but you're making an additional $16 in value on top of that. You can start to see how your money is gonna go a lot further trying to accumulate Bitcoin by mining at home rather than buying at an exchange. Additionally, you're not going to be exposing yourself to the dangers of KYC or trusted third parties. You will be able to mitigate issues of permission and censorship. If you're interested in buying an ASIC, I recommend starting on the Telegram channel, Hardware Market Verified Listings. The sellers who post ads in the Verified Listings channel have their identifying documents on file with the channel administration. Although this does provide a sense of security, this is not a silver bullet against scams and you do need to be careful. Mindfarm Buy and Kaboom Racks post ads in the Verified Listings channel often, and both of those distributors have very good reputations in the industry. If you ever want a second set of eyes or a second opinion on something involving an ASIC transaction, reach out to somebody on Twitter like myself, Diverter, Ronin Miner, there's a number of people out there that are more than willing to share their experiences and point you in the right direction. You do need to be aware that there are trade-offs with mining at home, mainly the heat and the noise. One of these machines will produce roughly 150 degrees Fahrenheit at the output, and it'll be running at roughly 85 decibels. If these machines don't get enough cool air, then they can't keep the circuit boards cooled down enough, and they will shut themselves down. Everybody's home situation is gonna be unique. There's no limit to the number of solutions that people can come up with to mitigate the issues of noise and heat. The solution I came up with for my situation was to build this enclosure. I just used plywood and MDF and I layered them together and I made a box big enough to fit an ASIC inside of it. My intention with this box was that it would allow enough airflow to go into the box to cool the ASIC, enough airflow to exit the other side to evacuate the hot air and the enclosure would minimize how much sound was radiating to the rest of the house. This enclosure has a removable lid. Inside the enclosure is a little shelf that the ASIC will sit on so that the output and input fans are aligned with the ductwork on either side of the enclosure. Also, I put an air filter on one side to clean the air that was going in so that the ASIC wouldn't get so dirty. On the other side, I experimented with a sound dampening technique called a diffuser, which is just a bunch of square dowels cut to different lengths. 
To minimize the number of holes I had going in and out of the enclosure, I installed a flat panel ethernet cable connection and a flat panel C19 connection for the power cable. Then inside the enclosure, those cables would be terminated to plugs that would then go into the ASIC. This enclosure attenuated the sound by roughly 10 decibels, which humans perceive as being about half as loud. It was quiet enough that I installed this thing directly below my kid's bedroom and it did not disturb them. I removed one of the windows in my basement and that's where I had the duct work for intake air and exhaust air passing through. The duct work line for the exhaust air also had an additional inline fan helping move the air along to evacuate all the hot air fast enough. The fans on the ASIC just aren't quite powerful enough to push air all the way through a long run of ductwork, especially the flexible ductwork. New generation ASICs like this also require 240 volts. So you wanna make sure you have the appropriate electrical infrastructure installed before you get your ASIC. Consult a licensed electrician for this. One ASIC is gonna consume about 15 amps. If you have alternative forms of power supply, such as solar panels or generators, those can be used to supplement your energy consumption. This might be beneficial if you need to be sensitive about your electrical consumption footprint. I'm of the opinion that the majority of people will not have any issues so long as they're keeping up with their power bills. The energy providers are in business to sell electricity, and so long as you're paying your bill, then there shouldn't be any problem. However, for those living under authoritative conditions in other parts of the world, you may need to be mindful about how your energy consumption might trigger certain red flags. That's where something like a solar panel array or a generator is gonna come in handy to help you minimize the amount of power you consume running your ASIC. By far, the most difficult part of mining Bitcoin at home is the infrastructure requirements. Once you have your electrical, your ventilation, and your noise under control, then the easiest part is actually the technical part, and that's connecting your ASIC to a mining pool. Connecting your ASIC to a mining pool is as simple as copy and pasting a URL into a configuration file and saving it. You don't have to provide any identifying information to connect to most pools. My personal recommendation is just connecting to Slush Pool. They have a cool mobile app so that I can monitor my ASICs while I'm on the go. Their reward system is set up so that miners get paid in proportion to the amount of hash rate they were providing at the time of the block finds. Slush Pool is not part of the Bitcoin Mining Council, which I think is advantageous because in my personal opinion, the Bitcoin Mining Council is an attack on the Bitcoin network. Slush Pool is also pushing development of custom firmware that's open source, it's called Brains. This firmware can be installed on ASICs as old as the S9s or any of them in the AntMiner line. Once that firmware is installed, users can tweak all sorts of settings to make their miners run much more efficiently and produce much more hash rate. Additionally, the firmware can help the miners run a lot quieter. There's even aftermarket fans that you can buy and install on your ASICs so that it runs much quieter. There's a number of immersion cooling solutions coming out where the ASICs are actually cooled in liquid instead of using air. Additionally, Slush Pool was the first mining pool to signal for taproot activation. And during the block size war, Slush Pool was in favor of small blocks. All around, I've been really happy using Slush Pool. And if you're a first time home miner, I suggest starting with them. Another consideration to take into account is network security. Slush Pool is working on a development called Stratum V2. Stratum V2 will introduce some additional security features that involve encrypting your information. There are safeguards you can take without running Stratum V2, such as running a VPN. And what that will do is encrypt your outgoing data so that your ISP can't see the information that you're sending. Additionally, it'll make it so that your ISP can't see where that information is going to. Another benefit is that the pool will not be able to see your IP address, so they won't exactly know where it's coming from either. One potential downside with the VPN is that it could introduce latency. One workaround is running a router that has DNS crypt on it, which will encrypt the data, and then running a SOX5 proxy. DNS crypt will make it so that your ISP can't see your data, and then the SOX5 proxy will make it so that all your ISP knows is that you're sending data to that proxy, but they don't see where it goes on the other side. And for slush pool, they'll see that the data is coming from a SOX5 proxy, but 
they won't know where it came from before that. Either way, you should make considerations about your network privacy because on this trajectory, it's probably more likely than not that regulators will come after miners eventually. So you might as well get prepared now. You can find all the information I've covered in this video in detail on my blog, econoalchemist.com. I have several articles on there about censorship resistance, privacy, and self-custody. You'll find my guide on mining Bitcoin at home under the title, Home Mining for Non-KYC Bitcoin. Another great resource was published by Diverter. It's called Mining for the Streets. You can find that on his website, diverter.hostyourown.tools. There's also a couple of good Citadel Dispatch episodes on the subject of mining Bitcoin at home. Check out episode number 31 with Diverter, Ronan Miner, and myself. And check out episode 38 with a number of other talented professionals in the mining industry. I hope this information has been helpful to you to realize that mining Bitcoin at home is still feasible and that there's a lot of benefit to doing so. I'm easy to get a hold of. If you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. My DMs are open. I'm active on Twitter and Telegram, and I use the same handle everywhere, Econo Alchemist.